<laughs> Alternative building materials expert Stefan Bell has returned to lead the two-day mud plastering workshop. The first of three coats of mud will be applied to all the straw bale walls during this all-volunteer workshop. This uh, mound of dirt is actually a premix supplied from an adobe company. It's used for making adobe bricks. It has a lot of aggregate in it, as you can see, but it has sand and clay mixed together. So what we do, uh, what I normally do is I get clay separate, I get sand separate, they're both pure. I use 70% sand, 30% clay, and mix the two together to get the right mud mixture for the wall plaster. In this case, what we have to do is we have to take this particular soil and go over here to a screen, screen the aggregate away from it. The dirt, clay, sand goes through it, and then we have a nice clean heaping mound of it. And what I'm going to do is a little bit of a compression test and it tends to break apart easier than normal which tells me there's a higher sand content than a clay, the amount of clay that should be. So my suspicion is that there's probably like 80% sand, 20% clay should still be okay. The other way to tell is rolls down real easy which is a characteristic of sand. But we're okay with it. And then what we do after that is we take that particular clean mix, throw it into cement mixer, and we do basically 12 shovels of it. Then we do four large hands of chop straw and then put in half a pound minimum to three quarter pound of wallpaper wheat paste as a binder. Mix it dry first so each molecule mixes around. This is real nice powdery stuff. Has to be dry mixed. If it's wet mixed, normally you get little balls forming and they end up being pockets on the wall. And then we add the water to it, mix it to a point where it's just soft enough like a, a mousse mix, a little bit moist, so it spreads real easy on the wall. And that ends up being the uh, mud plaster mix we use both on the outside and inside walls. So that's that. So let's uh, get rock and rolling. <laughs> the mud is basically composed of sand, clay, chopped straw proper mud mix that does not crack or come off sandy, deteriorate, is basically 70% sand, pure sand, 30% pure clay. And that combination has a stable integrity of not uh, decaying, breaking, or splitting, or coming off the wall. So that's what we did, is we got 18 shovels of the pre-mix, three quarters of a pound, five-eighths, around their wheat paste, four big hands of straw. We dry mix it for at least a few minutes so every molecule goes around every molecule. Then we add four and three quarter gallon bucket of water so it's already pre-calculated. We get this beautiful dead on mix. Okay, see this is that's a nice mix. It's wet enough to go on real easy. And on the south wall, the sun will dry it out just right. So this is beautiful. This is primo. And you want to work it every way possible. Get it in there real tight against the straw. So it takes a lot of forearm shoulder work to get that in there. Because it isn't as hard as it seems. There's just some tricks to it and some body motion. One of the main body motions in troweling is don't use just this motion. You want to use the whole body. And you'll see plasters, they're moving like a conductor. And that puts less strain on one part of the body. You can mud plaster direct on the straw or with the wire. And the wire isn't really necessary, but it does make it easier. But you can do a whole building Without mesh at all, the only areas around the doors and windows where you want expanded metal lath 
for the bull nosing and for the connection to the door around. That's a standard feature that you do. And what I find without the wire, you notice it has little grooves of straw. We usually either chainsaw these flat or just leave it. But here, when you put the mud plaster on with the trowel, you have to vibrate your hand to work it in. So it's a lot of work on your forearm wrist. So we use a, a bit more of a wet mix for the scratch coat for it to grip better. If it's too dry, it's really hard to apply it for it to stay initially. Once it's on there, you can put more on real easy. Here's a deep pocket. This is an interesting scenario. And most people load up their trowel with a little bit. I'm going to load up a lot because I want to hit that pocket and make sure the mud grabs. So if I didn't load it up that much, it would have fell out. Same here, there's a pocket. Load up a lot of it and then just force it across and you're in there. Flatten it out at an angle, the longest line. And what I do is I slip, I slide to get a whole edge. Then I'm holding it this way, then it's a quick turn around. Same thing again. Now, I've got a basic edge here. Then what I do is I take a lot of this stuff, hit it again and come across. So isn't that nice how that works? So you see how that window looks gorgeous? Just at this stage here. And what this does too is by being more meticulous with your scratch brown coat by forming things very good is that when you go to do your final coat, it's going to be so easy to do the final coat and make it look incredible instead of trying to save and work all the mistakes you neglected on the first two coats. You can see the color changing. There's lighter spots on there. So those areas of sun is already curing the mud. It dries very fast when the sun hits it. And so what we normally do is keep a check on that. Uh, if there is a hollow, then we want to put some more mud on that because it's already firm enough to grab it. Throughout the whole day, we can actually do what's called the scratch coat and a fill-in coat to start flattening out and making it nice and smooth and curvy. That's the advantage of the outside plaster on a sunny day. Today's not a hot summer day because we're in November, so it's in our favor. In the summer, I mean, you'd be going across in a half an hour, all this stuff would be already hard. And then it's harder to put the other mud on. So, here we have an indentation. This mix is a bit thicker because you can see the way, what I call a slump mound, it's holding pretty nice. It's not dripping, so it holds pretty good. Go in there, press real hard, and I'm visually checking it out and I can see certain hole areas. And I also throw it on instead of just placing it, so I smash it. And once I have it on, then after that, I'm just gliding to flatten it out a bit. I'll use the trowel both ways, left and right. You notice how I'm coming across to overlap. So again, there's just a little bit here. The mud mixture too on the outside, you gotta be careful. You can't put it on knowing the temperature goes below 32 degrees. You can't have it freeze, it crystallizes. Starting in the morning, you want to do what's called 32 climbing, and you don't want to have it drop below 32 at night. Inside is the advantage where you don't have the sun baking the mud, drying it out fast, is that it'll stay wet for three to seven days, which means you can keep working on it day after day after day. So that's the bonus on the inside that you can do that continuously, whereas with gypsum plaster, structural light, any of those finishes, you've got 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you can't take a coffee break. You, you know, it's a nightmare story sometimes. Right up. Through that day workshop, two days, you share a family situation, give to them all your knowledge unconditionally, and everybody else goes away and say, I learned so much, and now I can apply it to myself, and then give it to others. 
the mud has so much moisture in it. People forget that and the moisture rises due to the heat up in the top. If you have drywall, any type of wood decking, you'll actually, the next couple of days, you'll come in and it'll be dripping wet. So you need to open all the doors and windows every day until this mud dries. And at night, have a couple of windows open with a fan and cross ventilate. Normally, the scratch coat implies that when you put the first coat on, you then scratch it so that the second coat grips all those little channels. With stucco, you have to do that. With mud, you don't have to scratch it. You can just leave it like this smooth, patchy, and then when you put the second coat on, you sprinkle this with a garden hose, put the second coat on, and the two become one again. In the end, you end up having about anywhere to inch, inch and a half, two inches of mud on the wall. It varies. You know, this wall actually, if you had seen it yesterday, I mean, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it had pockets and, you know, so we managed to straighten it out really nice and we got enough fill in here that Ted will only have to do a finish coat on this and it'll be gorgeous. What I always like to do with the adobe walls is come in and shave all the corners down, make them nice radiuses. Then when it's time to apply the mud, I have the option of either putting a real hard edge back on or stain with a nice smooth radius. Then it's just a matter of starting to put the mud on and just get it stuck to the stucco lath. You just start working back and forth. You add a little mud here, take a little off there, you play with the corners. You look at the wall as kind of a, a big overall mass. Look at it as a sculpture. And this is like working with, with chocolate frosting. It's got this great texture. You push hard with a trowel and you can get it perfectly smooth. It's, it's like pushing a clay block around. And you have a tremendous amount of latitude in the shape. You start looking for slight imperfections and accentuating those. Because with an adobe wall, you do not want it to be perfectly plumb. You don't want it to have perfectly hard edges. You want this to look like that it's been worked by hand that has some expression in it and keep working back and forth, back and forth until you get a shape that starts to feel right. We're not having to go with a real thick coat. We just want it thick enough to cover the stucco lath and seal in the adobe since we're putting mud onto mud. Half an inch, three quarters of an inch is perfectly thick enough in this case. Inside, I recommend everybody go for mud. There's different colors. You can fix it yourself, repair it yourself, do it yourself. It's a beautiful organic matter. When it gets on you, yeah, there's no lime, there's no cement, drying out your skin, cracking, burning your eyes. Mud, you can be covered in it, wash it out. You can work on it for three days on the inside while it's still wet. So those are bonuses about the mud. <laughs>